Hello, my friends. This is Tanya, and that means another in-depth review of a fragrance. This time it's Interlude Black Iris by Amouage. Here I share my honest thoughts about it, as well as the differences with the original Inter Interlude Man from 2012. By the way, there is an, a review on the channel uh, from that one. I'm going to leave it up here and down below. As all the amouages, they have magnetic cap. Cute. And there's a bonus in the end, an unboxing. Unboxing coming up, so stay tuned. That unboxing is directly linked to the topic of the video. There is a lot to say about this line, in fact. Uh, and um, as usual, there are musical associations in the end. So Black Iris version of Interlude Man is considered an amber woody fragrance that was launched in 2020. The nose behind this uh, is Pierre Negrin and this one consists 25% of oils. That means Eau de Parfum. Six weeks of aging, says on the website, and three weeks of maceration and three weeks of maturation. That's the difference from many other brands. They actually macerate their juices in time and you don't really have to wait uh, any like month or two or three to make it last longer on skin and it projects right away. They're always perfect right after you open them up. This fragrance, by the way, it's absolute beast. Absolute beast from the day first, as I said, because of these processes. The Gift of Kings says uh, on there, and it is, it is true. They don't really follow those silly quick market fashions uh, that is widespread nowadays. The top notes of Black Iris are bergamot, rosemary, violet leaves. Heart note is or orris root, amber, frankincense, cystus, myrrh, vanilla. And vanilla is huge in this one. Base is oud, patchouli, cedarwood, sandalwood. And for me, personally, this fragrance is a smoke bomb. For about first two or three hours after application, it is super smoky. Yes, it is exceptionally tasteful, exquisite, super luxurious, but it is smoky to the point um, for me personally, when you smell the dusty ashes. So it's very, very powerful, very uh, powdery. That ashy powderiness uh, plays a huge role here. And the smoky facets are from the frankincense here. They're big. And even the oud, even the agarwood here seems to be burnt, like a burnt agarwood. There's an impression of maybe sweet incense sticks, especially on the start for me. In fact, in fact, I'll tell you a secret. A couple of times I mistaked this for Black Afghano from Nasumato. That's how <laughs> powerful the smokiness appears in this one for my nose. Maybe I'm just uh, exaggerating. Maybe I'm, I'm feeling uh, those notes way, notes way too much, but uh, that's how I feel. Of course, they don't smell the same at all, at all. But the, that smoky accord sometimes just pulls through so hard. It smells kind of burnt. But in some conditions, 
you feel more of the orris root. You feel the butteriness right away, um, especially in the warm weather conditions and um, it's very smooth. In, in the heat, it warms up very, very quickly and shows uh, the powdery iris even more. And that smoky accord comes to the back of the composition. One more thing, the other day, I thought this is material from the same brand in a different bottle from Amouage. In fact, this material is considered to be very vanillic. So it is a basically vanilla composition and these share the same gooey black vanilla bean accord. It's very bitter, but uh, it is sweetened up with some some resins, benzoin. And for me, these two, the black iris, I'm gonna spray both of them actually side by side. Black iris and material are having a lot in common, but material is uh, a little more, yeah, it is more feminine, but, <laughs> It's more feisty to my nose. The opening of material is challenging. Oh my. Uh, now black iris shows very smooth butter. Butter iris, less smokiness because it's kind of hot in here. But you, you definitely smell the fuming. Something smell, smells interesting here too. This Iris Accord here is just genius and it kind of feels global. Every aspect of natural Auris butter is in this fragrance. This massive powderiness, buttery, almost nutty aspect. It is very packed and easy to recognize. It is an experience that you have to explore for yourself, for sure. It smells different uh, for the wearer and um, in, like on the contrary, what, what you feel in the trail, what you smell. At times it can be perceived as, as some absolutely different profile. But when you have it on, it's the opposite way. I smell a major resemblance to, yeah, interlude man, a regular one, when I wear it. But in the air, for me, they don't smell the same. I don't know how it works. Maybe that's my skin chemistry that I actually can feel that, or I don't know, it's just my receptors. But uh, to me, these two don't smell the same in the air. I don't know how. The interlude man for me smells more fougere. I think this is a stunning, stunning flanker. It's even more potent, more pretentious. It is black tie event worthy, but much less universal than original. The original is mostly for me an amber fragrance based. No iris, so the, it is amber and the fougere part is quite significant. And that makes it possible for casual wear. It also has oregano top note. It makes more interesting start. And for me personally, I smell that oregano note even in the heart, like it lasts for a while for me. It makes it more of a um, low key and even maybe quirky, some like a quirky detail. Uh, I feel like black iris is more appealing, by the way, for the crowd. In terms of 
maybe possibilities of purchasing. In the black iris, you get a special occasion room filler fragrance that has recognizable notes. Even for a perfume rookie, yes, it is expensive, but very understandable. And the regular one leans heavily into that aromatic direction uh, and it's more savory. This one is sweeter, by the way. And uh, that savory can be read sometimes as a marinade for some people, or it could smell like kitchen flavorings at times, especially in certain conditions, certain temperatures. As I said, uh, there's a significant block of aromatics as well as that amber and vanilla. But still, in the heat, the regular one is very vanillic too. And on masculine skin, that part of pimento and oregano that is listed in uh, the regular one is even more obvious to my nose. On, my, on me personally, <laughs> this finishes really, really quickly, that aromatic accord. I'd like to smell it more, but not. It falls to vanilla quicker. But in the core of both of them, both interludes, it is smooth oriental amber that is always, always appreciated among both Eastern and Western oriented audiences. That's why interludes are among the best sellers of the brand, together with Reflection Man. The vanilla also contributes to its popularity. Very rich, decadent, even though it's not a vanilla forward profile. Most of the time, yeah, it's, it, like some, some conditions can pull that vanilla really, really hard. And as I said, it will smell very similar to this one, but uh, it has so much more than vanilla. People love black iris and it's very attention grabbing, sexy and refined fragrance. And that vanilla is much more transparent in the original than in this. And for the oud, oud in both of these is very tame and smooth, no animalics. In black iris is more present to my nose, especially in the base. It's that kind of oud that blends into the amber accord very effort effortlessly. I could wear black iris for nights out. And as for blind buy, I mean, please don't. I, I don't recommend blind buys for amouages at all. It is always a gamble. Um, to smell them off people is usually far different than wearing it on yourself. I have a couple tough ones that I love scent-wise, but they're so hard to wear to the point that you have to choose the occasion uh, and think, oh, is it gonna be appropriate that day to wear it? Maybe it's too bold for the situation or something. And there's also can be a problem with potency of the blend. They are sometimes nuclear. For example, I have to be very, very light on my Blossom Love. I love it with all my heart. Uh, in fact, Cherry Blossom that is listed here is one of my favorite notes in fragrances. But this is so potent, it gives me headache. <laughs> it smells divine though. It's sweet cherry blossom and, and even regular cherry in there, very juicy and sandalwood, like smooth, creamy sandalwood, but still, like even when I opened it right now, this is nuclear. 
As for the black iris, you have to be dressed, at least business casual for it, and be very confident. In fact, I know a guy who wears this as his signature uh, fragrance now. At least this is his like period of life that he wears it every day, but he loves it with all his heart. This is the fragrance uh, that um, you have to like really love to wear every day. It's not the one that you can throw on without thinking where you're going because people will recognize you for this trail. Next up, musical associations. Uh, for me, it is quite complex. Complex guitar solo on start and smooth voice of a male singer later on. Um, and today I offer you Plug-in Baby from Muse as a representation to this afflactory experience. In fact, I'm a big fan of this brand, of this band, not brand, band muse. <laughs> In fact, I'm a fan of Amouage and I want it all too. So it kind of matches today. And I really wanted to mention a muse song in the video somehow. Um, this song in particular is really old and um, it is structurally close to interlude Black Iris. It, it evokes a lot of emotion, just like this juice. That song doesn't leave people indifferent. I know it's a very different style of musical representation from the, the regular interlude that I was talking about earlier. Um, in the regular one, there was a scratchy voice, maybe, um, like it was absolutely different. It has like an ambience spice or um, aromatics. And, um, this is exactly what I wanted to say. These two are related. Yes, but they're so far in the mood approach absolutely different. You can have both and wear them on different occasions. And now we came to the fun part. The unboxing. The unboxing. I'm so excited, guys. You don't imagine because this is another interlude. It is 53. Oh my, there's no space. I'm going to take away some stuff first. So this is interlude 53 man that has 53% of oils. This is considered an exceptional X-ray. And um, I mean, all of the brand uh, juices are beast mode, but these X-rays are even more. They're just on a next level. I have the cool knife with me today and we're going to open it up. Hopefully it's not going to be stubborn like some of the boxes now. <laughs> oh, this one is easy. See, it's made in Amman, just like all the others. Like this. So cool. I'm so excited. As usual. We have to spray it. <laughs> mm. 
This smells more like an original. Definitely has that um, fougere style. This, they share a lot in common. So, the di only difference I see is this is an opaque bottle. And that is clear, yeah. And all the extraits have a uh, little, um, little bangle over there hanging down. I'm gonna have to try to put them more closer. <laughs> there we go. I can't see where is my other interlude. I'll just use, try to, this is just the first impressions. It will take a while for me to um, figure out, to figure out what is the difference between uh, all three. Well, at least to wear maybe this for a while and um, think about it and tell the big review about it. I can definitely smell more citrus in here. That's interesting. Like lemongrass, maybe. That is very, very different. But it still, it still smells more like original than black iris. Yes, it is um, the extrait of an original for sure. Okay, I'm so happy though. I don't know when the full review of Interlude 53 will come out, um, but much later. I have to decipher this for sure and wear it for a week or something. It takes time, it takes time. Guys, please share this video with your friends and don't forget to like. Don't forget to like all the videos that you watch. And of course, consider subscribing, especially if you like my stories. By the way, I didn't say anything about the notes, forgot. It's listed in the back. It's listed here too. Now the top notes are, are bergamot, oregano, pimento berry. Mid is amber, frankincense, cystus, apoponox resin, and base is leather, agarwood, patchouli, sandalwood. Uh, it is almost the same as in the classic line, uh, in the classic one, with the exception of vanilla, because in the classic, vanilla is mentioned as a separate accent. Uh, and uh, in this one, it doesn't. I can't really tell. Like, I can't smell vanilla on any of these blotters now because it's only the opening, but still. <sighs> Thank you, everybody who watched till the end. I'm reading all the comments. Please scribble something in there for fun and have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye.